I'd like you to remember with me in two unit, right? You can pretty much encapsulate everything you know about volumes in a very, very concise statement, right? And it starts off like this. Someone want to start me off? Finish me off, right? I need some. Uh, I need. I need some boundaries, and then the integram will be. Now, now, this case, I could go either way, but you, you guys know it doesn't matter, right? If I choose y, then that's going to be x, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. What does this mean? What we're doing, and um, here's the first place that I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. What we're doing is we are considering the sum of a number of infinitely small... What kind of shape is this? It's a cylinder, right? That's where this pi r squared h sort of thing comes from. Yeah, do you remember this? We looked at this before. Now, this notation sort of disguises a little bit what's going on. We had to go back and prove this. And this is my first step into digging back deeper into what volumes are. I'm going to rewrite this, but I want you to remember what's actually happening here. What are the pieces, right? The first thing is that using integral notation and this dx business, right? We try to, we kind of treat, we've been treating dx particularly in rates of change. We've been treating it just kind of like a regular number, like part of a fraction and moving around, all that kind of thing. For that reason, I mean, it's partly true, but we forget it's not a normal number. It's a normal number the way infinity is a normal number in that it's not, right? In fact, what's going on is there is a limit involved, okay? Now, I'm going to change my labels a little bit here just so that we can clarify. This really is about a cylinder, okay, um, that is infinitesimally small. I'm going to say, look, that thing is really a height. It is really a height. Okay. I'm going to take a limit as h approaches zero. So I'm going to relabel this h in a second, and then I'm adding things up. Right. I am actually adding up an infinite series of things. That's what volumes is. Right. So I'm going to go from some x boundary here to that, and then of course in here I've got my volume of a cylinder. But r is what I'm going to be calling the function of x <coughs> that I used to be calling y. That's just a label. But r is a helpful, it's a more helpful label, I'd argue, because it tells you it's not just the distance. It's the radius of your cylinder. Okay. So we know this. This is fine. I want to show an example question, which takes this very simple idea, uh, a question you could do already. <coughs> But we're going to dig a bit deeper into, well, you know what? If this is really what's underneath here, you can muck around with this. As it were, you can take the engine out of the car and put a new engine in there if you know how it works, if you lift the bonnet and see what's going on. So I need you to draw a set of axes for me. The set of axes is going to be, I only, need, I only need the positive x side. We won't need the, um, the negative x side. So if you draw something like this. Excuse me. What I'd like you to draw on here is a pair of curves, and don't worry too much about the scale. Uh, the pair of curves I'd like you to draw for me is um, y equals e to the x and y equals 1 on x. So your standard exponential curve, that's just been in my head because we look at exponential growth in k. So uh, draw that guy in. And uh, also the standard rectangular hyperbola one on x. Would you draw that for me? <coughs> and what we're going to do is, um, using these guys, we're going to generate a volume out of this. Okay. Now, I want you to remember, with this idea here, and of course, if you wanted to, you could have swapped your x's and y's, what effect would that have? If I, if I wrote it down with x's and y's and y's and x's? Very good. I'm rotating around, instead of rotating around the x-axis, uh, which is this way, I'll be rotating around the x-axis, right? Sorry, the y-axis. I just said the x-axis. Okay. So alternatively, I could have had this. Uh, I should have said something else. The important thing to note about both of these is that as a technique, they are limited to be around the coordinate axes, right? That's kind of what you get out of these. I want to push on that and see if we can get something different out of this. Was there a question? Or oh, no, I was just going to say that the cylinder is now horizontal. Is yes, horizontal? very good. So you've got your cylinders, because the rotation is going a whole different way, as opposed to this way, okay, um, you're getting cylinders in a different orientation. 
Okay. Now, here's the um, particular area I'd like us to um, <coughs> rotate <coughs> around. We'll do, yeah, we'll do the x-axis. So if we go, say, here and here. I'm actually not interested in what these values are. I'm just going to call them A and B. The reason why is because it's actually a bit icky to deal with these, these numbers, but it gives us a really nice shape. If I take this region, that's a bit leaning over, but you'd be idea. If I take this region in here, and if I rotate around the x-axis, like so, and you should have that um, arrow showing the rotation as well. What kind of shape do I get? Now, being that I'm rot rotating around this axis, <coughs> excuse me, and um, I'm not including the area beneath 1 on x, I'm going to get a hollow volume. I'm going to get a volume with a hole in the middle of it, yeah? So do your best. It might help you if you have a ruler, because when you rotate around this, you ought to get a symmetrical shape, yes? I should be symmetrical according to my axis of rotation. So what you want to do probably is with your ruler, just to help you get a more accurate diagram, you want to measure, okay, well, what's this distance here, right? On mine, I have 11 centimeters because I have a comically large diagram. So if it's 11 centimeters up, when you rotate around, the opposite edge will be 11 centimeters on this side. Same deal with these two spots. They're going to have their corresponding bits there. So that's just a little help to make your diagram a little more accurate. So I hope you got something roughly looking like this. By the way, um, as you can see, this is an intensely visual topic, almost the exact opposite of when we're looking at polynomials and integration. So if you don't have any other colors that you bring with you routinely, I would suggest now is the time to decide to bring some colors with you uh, because it just makes your diagrams so, so, so much clearer and um, things get clogged up very, very quickly. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice <coughs> is that I am taking an area and rotating that. Yes, I'm taking an area and rotating that. Now, ordinarily, we would think, oh, okay, the area that I take and rotate to get a cylinder, the area I rotate, is this strip, and it connects to the, um, to the x-axis, or the axis of rotation. So there are no holes in it, right? So that's why you get a cylinder. But because I have this part, and it's lifted off the axis, if I look at a particular area, right? If I slice this across the axis of rotation, perpendicular to that, I do not get a cylinder. I don't get any cylinders. In fact, that's why I chose this particular volume in these particular boundaries. If I were to go straight into the whiteboard, right, what kind of shape would I get? It's not a cylinder. What is it? Now, a washer is a perfect word. Now, maybe you don't know what a washer looks like, so I'm going to draw one for you, and I want you to draw one with me as well. Let's choose a particular part of this, uh, just because it's easy and it's been highlighted for us. Why don't we choose this um, leftmost edge, okay? And just imagine a tiny little slice of it that is, you know, uh, dxy, okay? And what I'd like us to do is just draw it off over here to the right-hand side. 